So I am uh, Ross Dawson, a uh, futurist, uh, together with uh, Gerd Leonard, who's uh, visiting Sydney at the moment, also a futurist, and uh, in a series of conversations uh, today talking about closed versus open systems and uh, which one will prevail. So Gerd, uh, closed versus open, uh, which side are you on? <laughs> Semi-open. No, <laughs> just kidding. I, I get a lot of questions from my clients because basically as we're looking at, at so-called social media, uh, and Facebook and so on there, my, a lot of my clients are saying like, do we really need to do this to like open up to the outside world and conversations with our customers and do we, need, do we really need this? Because of course it's, um, as Marshall McLuhan has already said, the global village is not a quiet place, right? It, it's actually a noisy place and it can be rather confusing. So uh, if you're a big brand or car manufacturer or a broadcaster or so, do you really want people to come and talk to you about what you should be doing and how to innovate and how to contribute? I mean, this is a big, big issue. I think basically what we're seeing happening is that open systems are by and large faster, more viral, have more innovation and are more fun for people to work in than closed organizations. The only case I can really think of, of a really closed uh, ecosystem working is Apple, uh, which, you know, I love Apple products, but they're, of course, infamous for being... Um, run by a benevolent dictator. Um, so the the whole uh, paradigm of being open, I think, is is the question of sort of Google versus Apple or say... Um, well, Google are not necessarily as open as they, uh, as they like, to, like to pretend yes. to. Yes, comment on that. <laughs> well, I mean, I think back ages ago, you know, I've said that, you know, the future is towards open systems. There is, a, I think, a, a gradual, long and gradual trend towards open systems, which it isn't always linear. And I guess over time, looking at the last decade, I've actually it hasn't gone as open as I would have expected. We've had an extraordinary shift to open, particularly in terms of transparency, and that's a, a massive trend. We've had a big trend to openness in uh, platforms, so in terms of open source and the growth of open source, to, uh, including the corporate environment, mm -hmm. uh, clearly in mobile operating systems now with Android. And But there's still, uh, in terms of the ecosystems which have really developed, there still is a battle between ecosystems. In a way, there is this balance between open and closed where you want to be open within a space but have boundaries around that and to compete with other ecosystems. And I think that's what we are beginning to see. So arguably, um, you know, Android has been a very open, and in some ways too open, and you get fragmentation of the, the operating system and so on. But it still is creates these, to a point, closed systems. So where the Android App Store is one closed system, and then the iTunes uh, App Store is another closed system. And these are, you know, within open spaces, you then uh, have, they ultimately have boundaries themselves. They are closed. Well, I think it's not a black or white question. Uh, clearly, the uh, uh, very few things, of course, are black and white questions. But open and closed, I think they're working in conjunction. I sometimes say you should be open a map as much as possible, right? Because there are situations where uh, if it's completely open and available uh, to everyone and with everyone, where it becomes rather impractical or, or slow or bogged yes. down with yeah. quality control issues and so on and so on. So, uh, however, in general, I think that what we're seeing is that if people are involved in, for example, making a new product or sharing it or forwarding it, like YouTube yeah. type scenario, I mean, clearly uh, Twitter beats CNN in, in many ways now. Not to say that CNN is yeah. closed, it's yeah. not, right? It's using Twitter. But, uh, but uh, the power of Twitter is the chaotic open nature of it. Right? Yes. Uh, and that means I need other professionals to filter it, which is closed, right? So basically, I think it's always going to be a combination of the two. But, but uh, in reality, as the um, the way that the world is connecting and interconnecting with each other, which means that we'll probably have more need for open interfaces and APIs. You know, the APIs alone have been given a huge boost of value yes. to, to the internet economy. And Otherwise, that, you wouldn't have Google yeah. Maps, you know? But I think that that's one of the, the biggest single uh, turning points, I think, in the shape of the internet was the fact that Google provided open APIs to Maps and a whole bunch of other things. And that provided momentum to basically where it's standard for almost any app to have APIs. Though I think one of the issues is the pace of shift to openness. You can't believe that we are shifting to a open standards or open uh, platforms in a particular environment. Though that doesn't necessarily mean that strategically you need to immediately become no, no, open. It's, it's not black so or white. It's you know? kind of the same. We will 
we understand that that's where it's going, but there still can be value to be gained if you're looking from purely commercial perspectives as opposed to, to uh, idealistic ones as to the pace to be able to, at which you un, uh, open out from a closed system. And it's, I think one of the very interesting things is around open, uh, openness in social networks. We've seen Facebook become a lot more open than it was, basically through social pressure, not so much through competitiveness. Now Google Plus, with its launch, does allow immediately complete export of your social network data. And that starts to, again, change the competitive landscape. It's not as if people will immediately switch from Facebook to Google Plus because it has an export function and Facebook doesn't, yet it changes the overall landscape, and particularly in terms of the choices people make over time and where they keep their the bulk of their social profile. You know, I think openness, of course, is becoming a huge asset, but it can also become maybe not a liability, but a uh, an encumbrance in some ways as you're dealing with the process of being open. Right? But for example, if you're looking at rights, like music rights or broadcast rights, film rights, and so on, these systems are very close, right? And that, that's a real hindrance to the commerce system, right? Yes. And that's clearly, in, in this case, it's quite clear that we must open this up and we must create open licensing platforms like we have in broadcasting, yes. you know, clear regulation standards, you know, there are some places where if we don't open up, it's going to crash, right? because basically it means yes. that everybody who's trying to use it is not legal as a consequence of it not being open, right? Yeah. And there's other places, for example, with banking and, and security, where a certain kind of openness would not be a good thing because it would be too easy to crack, right? Yes. I mean, so we're not, I mean, I wouldn't be proposing to have WikiLeaks for banking uh, or, you know, for my personal data. But at the same time, I think some of the things that we've seen in this process is it's good to have transparency, which, which generates honesty or which generates sort of a general feeling of trust. Right? That's really what it's all about. And if you need some control to have trust, then maybe that's, that's also a good thing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think as far as rights, for example, goes, we must have open platforms for, for rights licensing, which is a crucial impediment right now for commerce. Yeah, yeah. And part of that related to that is the Creative Commons is a or multiple or more, uh, I suppose, finely tuned ways of being able to license content, uh, which were as opposed to basically, you know, this, I should say, the black and white closed and open, and getting more subtleties in how we can license content and generate revenue, revenue from that, I think is very important. Yeah, so I think to summarize, we could say that I think open as much as possible is probably a good mantra uh, as far as operating things are, are concerned. It's not probably not a good idea to just say, let's open up everything and, and it's all right there. You know, that's that would be uh, that would be tough to execute on. But um, there's unfortunately no recipe for this. So yeah, and as, <laughs> that's a, and as we've discussed, sort of the, every strategy is unique. So there is uh, no right or wrong in terms of uh, uh, you know, the openness or close, just recognizing that there is a fundamental drift to, drift to openness. So that's a snapshot of uh, things, thoughts around uh, open and uh, closed systems and strategies. So uh, for more, you can go to uh, rossdawson.com for information about myself. And, and media, mediafuturist.com and of course Twitter, uh, G. Leonhard. But if you want to get to my open stuff on the web, which is all available for free, more or less, just put in GERD, G-E-R-D, and free PDF, and you can download all of my books. And I'm open to your donations as well, by the way, uh, if you want to uh, do that later. But anyway, we're also on YouTube, Ross Dawson and Gerd Leonhard did lots and lots of videos on YouTube, including this one, hopefully. And thanks for listening.